1816, the French boat, La Mezuse, crashed about 100 kilometers off the coast of Mauritania. It was carrying 400 people, but because there wasn't enough lifeboats, 147 passengers had to sail on a raft made out of the Medusa's debris. This was bound to end up catastrophically, and it did. The passengers were out in the sea without food or water for 13 days. When the raft was found, only 15 survivors were left. They had been gone through starvation, dehydration, had witnessed murders and suicides, and were eventually forced to practice cannibalism. This shocked the French public. It caused even more controversy when it was shown that the cause of the wreck was the captain's lack of experience, and the reason he got his position was through his connections in the corrupt French government. This was critical considering that France had just passed from an empire to a monarchy two years earlier in 1814. The leadership was new, and already people started seeing the damages of its corruption. Théodore Géricault saw an opportunity to launch his career by making a painting on a contemporary, controversial, and popular subject. You can see how motivated he was by looking at the amount of research he did for an art piece he wasn't commissioned for. His research was almost obsessive. In early 1818, he met with two survivors, Henri Savigny and Alexandre Coréard. He built a scale model of the raft. He made sketches of bodies at the hospital's morgue. He went there to study the faces of dying patients. He brought limbs back to his studio to paint them as they decay, and he would even go as far as bringing back decapitated heads and drawing them. He drew many sketches to determine the best scene to convey the tragedy of the Medusa. Could it be the raft being left behind by the lifeboats? Could it be the cannibalism? Or maybe it could be the rescue? Jericho finally chose to paint the moment where the passengers see, in the far distance, their possible rescuers. This way, he can show the last agonizing moments of this event. This is the portrait of a man not wanting to let the naked body of his son be taken by the sea. He is completely hopeless, knowing that even if he is saved, the pain, the suffering, and the grief wouldn't be over. Then you look at his neighbor, the disturbed man in the darkness, tearing his hair out, and you wonder, which of these two men have it better? As you move up, though, you see more and more hope, starting with this man pointing towards the ship and finally ending with the African man waving his handkerchief, desperately hoping to get saved. The composition is based on two pyramids and numerous diagonal lines, the strongest one starting from bottom left to top right. Jericho was heavily influenced by Peter Paul Rubens, and this diagonal line can be put in parallel with Rubens' triptych painting, The Elevation of the Cross. By doing that, we can see how both lines are composed with the use of contrast, bodies, and extended limbs. A notable fact about this painting is that 20-year-old Eugène Delacroix makes an appearance in it as a model. Delacroix greatly admired Jericho, and he was very excited to see the Raft of the Medusa before everybody else. If you don't know Eugène Delacroix, then you may know him for his very famous painting, Liberty Leading the People, which we made a video about. With Raft of the Medusa, Jericho achieved the fame and recognition he pursued, but also contributed to greater tolerance in the art world. When his masterpiece was first shown, he had been criticized for painting what was called a pile of dead bodies. At the time, some people saw art as a way of reaching an ideal beauty, and these people were deeply shocked by being exposed to such an unpleasant subject. Jericho showed that art can convey more than simply beauty, but also emotions by painting them or provoking them, no matter how good or bad they can be.